What's going on guys? Welcome back. It's 1995. It's another retro view view. It's WCW. It's Super Brawl 5. And Hogan's boys are running wild. That's right. It's time to talk about it now. Let's get through it, shall we? The first match out of the gate was actually pretty decent. Two athletic guys going at it. Alex Wright and Paul Roma. The only problem was this match lasted 13 minutes. We didn't see need to see Paul Roma and Alex Wright for 13 minutes. It got boring after five. And then it lasted 13. And yeah, while they were very athletic in the ring, the, their charisma just couldn't carry the match. It was dreadful. And Alex Wright gets the win again just by rolling up Paul Roma after him and Orndorff get distracted on the apron for fucking ages. It seemed like it took forever. Um, second match wasn't much better. Here comes Jim Duggan against Buckhouse Buck. Oh my God, this was dreadful. Bunkhouse Buck and Jim Duggan in an 11-minute match. It was brutal. Absolutely brutal. Your highlight for me is Colonel Parker. Colonel Parker was really entertaining as a manager. One of my favourites in the 90s, actually. I can't lie. Colonel Parker was really fun to watch. Um, yeah, his antics on the outside of the ring were a highlight for this one for, for, this one for me. Um, match itself was just a basic Jim Duggan match. Oh, waving the American flag. USA, USA. And he gets the win. Yeah. Dreadful. Um, then they treated us to a, another dose of the Sullivan brothers going one-on-one. -on -one. That was another seven minutes I ain't seeing again. And getting back. Fucking hell, it was brutal. Brutal. Kevin Sullivan gets the win after some help from the butcher or the barber or the candlestick maker, whatever we're saying, whatever they're calling this geezer now. Fucking dreadful. Absolutely dreadful match. A better match up next. Harlem Heat against the Nasty Boys. Harlem Heat and Sherry, fantastic. A fantastic combination. I've seen enough of the Nasty Boys, though. All right. They were okay late 80s, early 90s, but now it's 94, 95, sorry. And yeah, they've seen better days. And this match weren't that great. It was better than what they've had previously, but still weren't that great. It was just because of Harlem Heat and Sherry made this match passable for me. Black Top Bully. Barry Darso. Axe, was it from Demolition? And the Repo Man. Now he's the Black Top Bully. And he's going up against Dustin Rhodes. And Dustin Rhodes was decent. Arguably just as good as his brother Cody. Maybe better. Maybe had more charisma. Cody gets the title these days and Dustin couldn't back then because look who's in front of him. Didn't stand a chance in this company, did he? And he's losing to the black top bully. What? It was a 16-minute match, so that match dragged as well. Another match that dragged that didn't need to go that long. Really didn't. The black top bully. Why is he going 16 minutes? Sting and Randy Savage against Avalanche and Big Bubba Rogers. Finally, the boss man has gone back to his old gimmick before he went to the WWF. Big Bubba Rogers actually suited him and was pretty good. And I'm glad to see that. Avalanche. Yeah, it's just a rip off of Earth Earthquake, isn't it? And anytime soon now, we know he's going to switch gimmicks to an even worse one. Um, but yeah, this was an actually okay tag match. I didn't mind this one, to be honest with you. Wasn't that bad. Wasn't that bad. They all played to their strengths. It was decent. Savage was very good still. And one the one that hurt me when, when he left WWF, in my opinion... He could have lasted. He could have still gone in there. It was just they were going with this new generation thing. And they didn't want the old guys around anymore. And Savage was damn good and should have stayed. But yeah, he proved it. In this match, he was really good. So was Sting. And it was a passable tag match. And then we got Hogan versus Vader. And this was better than I thought it would have been. Just the finish. Um, Vader kicks out of the leg drop on a one count. <laughs> on a one count, he kicked out of the leg drop. Couldn't believe it. And then he power bombs Vader, but the ref's knocked down. And he's there pinning Hogan, and no one's around. Here comes Ric Flair, who's retired, and then gets in the ring and, yeah, just gets involved and ends in a DQ, and they're all brawling. And, yeah, Hogan ends up standing in the ring with the championship, and Vader's off out of the building, not happy. And that's the end of the show. It was quite entertaining at the end, I can't lie. 
better than they've done before, Hogan. But it's all Hogan's boys all over the show now taking over. And, yeah, my majority of the show was hard to watch. I'd say the last two matches were okay because of Vader, because of Savage, and because of Sting, in my opinion. The Highland Heat were enjoyable. Other than that, yeah, this show was bad. Let me know what you think down below. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time for another retro review.